Good evening from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, located just outside Washington, D.C. in Greenbelt, Maryland. You are currently looking at a live view of the Space Telescope Operations Control Center, located here at Goddard. The Space Telescope Operations Control Center, also referred to as the STOC, is responsible 24-7, 365 days a year for monitoring all Hubble systems and facilitating all of the telescope science observations. As a way of setting the stage for what will be happening over the coming week during the STS-125 flight, we will now show a short video feature package about the stock on NASA television. The stock is the Space Telescope Operations Control Center. And in the stock is where we control Hubble. We control it on a day-to-day -day basis. So all the activities we do, the pointing the telescope at the different targets, the different stars, the different galaxies, getting the data back down, sending commands up to tell it where to point, moving it, oriented in different positions, all that originates in the stock. We have a crew that's there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, controlling the telescope. In normal day-to-day -day operations, we don't perform the science activities here. We're really running the telescope. The scientists are up at the Science Institute in Baltimore. So the data is going to come back down through us and then get sent up to the scientists in Baltimore. And then they're going to decode the data and understand what those pictures mean. It's a, a different operational atmosphere for a servicing mission versus nominal operations. For a regular day-to-day, -day, we only have about three or so people really watching the telescope. And telescopes are built very robustly. If they have a problem, they take care of themselves, they put themselves in a safe state, then you go back and you isolate the problem and fix to see what happened later on. The difference is during a servicing mission, the astronauts can only be out for six hours roughly at a time, and that's because of a limit on how much oxygen and water they carry on board. So if a problem occurs, we don't have the luxury of talking about it and debating what the right course of action is. We have to take action right away. So we have a team of experts who are on console. Somebody's watching the power, somebody's watching the communications, somebody's watching how the telescope will point, and if they see a problem in one of those subsystems, they alert the rest of the team, and we have to quickly diagnose that problem and come up with a resolution because the astronauts, they can't stand around. If they're standing around, then something's not going to get done. So after we get released from the shuttle, we're going to go through a series of commissioning exercises to make sure each of these cameras is working correctly, each of these instruments. So we're going to test them out over a series of months to make sure that the picture that we hope to get is really there. And just like learning how to use any new camera, you have to play with a little bit to try to get the exact focus, exact orientation so it's working correctly. So it really takes about four to five months after we release from the shuttle before the telescope is completely back and working and operational again. Back now with live mission coverage. During STS-125, there will be two teams of flight controllers supporting the stock. Currently on duty is the planning team who have been on console since about 6 p.m. this evening. The other group of stock flight controllers, known as the Orbit Team, finished their first active mission shift about three and a half hours ago. Earlier this evening, we had an opportunity to talk with the lead of the Orbit Team, Mission Operations Manager Keith Wallius, just after he came off console. We first asked Keith about what it was like in the stock during the launch of Atlantis. It was great. It was a feeling that we've been here for seven years, we've been getting ready for the mission to go, and it's finally happened. It's just like you're getting ready for the big game. We've been practicing for years. The game is on now. We then asked Keith to summarize the activities that took place in the stock today and what's planned for Wednesday. The main big event for today was the onboard inspection for the crew, and that was taking up most of the day. Here, we weren't as busy. We were just doing some minor preparations, but the real activity is going to begin in about a half an hour. We're going to close the aperture door. That's the door that hasn't been closed since 2007. Of course, we need that door open if we're going to be taking pictures. But as you get close to the orbiter, you worry about contamination on our mirror, and HST is so sensitive, you can't have any contamination. So in about a half an hour from now, we're going to shut that door, and it's going to stay closed for the duration of the mission. And we're not going to open it until just before they release us. The other big activity that's going to occur tonight is we have these large high-gain antennas that we use to communicate with the telescope all the time to send our science data down. 
while our science instruments are now in a safe state. So we're going to retract those high gain antennas, we're going to pull them in, and they're going to be nested for the entire mission, and we're going to open them up again shortly before we release. So those are the big activities for tonight, getting the high gain antennas pulled in, and also getting our aperture door closed. It's a pretty busy day tomorrow. We're going to start off early. We're getting the telescope in a state so that it can be serviced. And just as if you were doing some work around your house, if you're going to do some electrical work, you want to turn things off that don't need to be on. So we're going to turn off some of our critical electronic equipment because you don't want things to be on and jostled as you're getting ready to be birthed and grappled. So we're going to start turning some things off. We're they going to do some tests, make sure our safe mode tests, everything is working correctly. We have to turn the telescope so that the orbiter can grapple us. It's not in a position right now where it can be grappled. So we're going to send some commands to put it in the right position so that it can be grabbed by the orbiter. And then finally, just before they grapple with us, we're going to essentially put ourselves in a drifting state. We're not going to have any control to point in any way whatsoever. So when the orbiter grabs us, it's going to get us and put us into the back of the bay. Once we're in the back of the bay, then we start turning things on again. We start applying power to the vehicle. And we're going to start to get power not only are we going to charge our batteries up one more time with the solar arrays, but then we're going to go to internal power from the orbiter, and we're going to get power from the orbiter after that. In an effort to maximize science data gathering, the stock continued with Hubble Science Operations right up until the launch of Shuttle Atlantis yesterday afternoon. When the call came from Mission Control in Houston that the crew was go for on-orbit operations, the stock team began transitioning Hubble out of science ops and preparing the observatory for the shuttle's arrival on Wednesday afternoon. As Keith mentioned, early tomorrow morning, the two large high gain antenna mast on the telescope will be retracted. That activity should happen somewhere around 2 a.m. Eastern time. The change in the positioning of Hubble solar arrays that Keith talked about should take place at about 7.45 a.m. And as Keith also described, the stock team will be sending commands to reduce electrical power load demands on the telescope tomorrow that activity should happen just before 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. On Wednesday, the stock team will also be turning off some built-in safing systems on Hubble to prevent the observatory from going into a safe mode condition just before grapple of the telescope happens. At about 10.40 a.m. Eastern on Wednesday, the terminal initiation or TI burn will take place, which will put Atlantis on a final intercept course with Hubble. When Hubble is within about seven miles of Atlantis, commanding by the stock to the telescope will transition from the TDRS system to the Space Shuttle's S-band communications. Use of S-band communication will continue until after Hubble is redeployed and the shuttle is greater than seven miles in distance. When the shuttle is in close proximity to Hubble on Wednesday, Megan MacArthur will use the shuttle's robot arm to grab hold of Hubble. She will then maneuver the telescope onto the Flight Support System, or FSS, platform in Atlantis's payload bay. After Hubble is on the FSS, the first activity will be to orient the shuttle and telescope so that Hubble's solar arrays can face the sun and Hubble's batteries can get a full recharge. Shortly after that, an external connection from the flight support system to the telescope will happen. At that point, the telescope's batteries will be taken offline and Hubble will receive all of its electrical power from shuttle until just before it is redeployed on flight day nine. So here at Goddard, the entire Servicing Mission 4 team will be anxiously standing by for their first close-up look at Hubble since the telescope was deployed at the end of the STS-109 servicing mission in March 2002. We will now return to Mission Control in Houston for continuing NASA television coverage of the flight of Atlantis on the STS-125 mission.